Now we're gonna go through all the 500 data points starting from the lower data points all the way to the highest one. I'm gonna talk through them and hopefully you'll get a feel of what the Netherlands software engineering market is like. Hey, this is Gary with the Pragmatic Engineer. How much do software engineers and engineering managers make in the Netherlands? My answer is anywhere between 30,000 euros per year to 300,000 euros per year. How do I know this? It's because of two reasons. First, I've been a hiring manager in Amsterdam in the Netherlands at Uber, and I did this for four years. Now, being a hiring manager, I extended a bunch of offers so I knew our salary ranges, and I got a sense of what other companies are paying, who's paying more, who's paying less. The second part is I launched a survey asking to share your salary anonymously or semi-anonymously, and hundreds of people have done so, and I finally got around to collecting this data source. Also, be sure to subscribe to my newsletter, The Pragmatic Engineer. This newsletter is a great way to keep up to date with how the market in the US, Europe, and globally is changing for software engineers. It's the number one technology newsletter on Substack. It's free to subscribe to. If you pay, you get a lot more articles. And if you work at a tech company, you can probably expense this newsletter as part of your learning and development budget. Subscribe at pragmaticengineer.com. Now, as a disclaimer, the data I'm showing you is from the middle of 2021, and every offer is different. A company might extend an offer A to one person and a different offer to a different person, especially if that second person negotiates. So don't expect that just because you see these numbers, these are offers you're definitely gonna get, but hopefully they'll give you a guidance of what to roughly expect. Now we could just be going through these numbers, but doing so would not paint a clear picture of the market. You would see this very wide range. So instead we're gonna go by tiers and seniority. And by tiers, I mean, we're gonna start with the what I call tier one salaries, which are benchmarking against local companies. These are the what I would call hyper-local wages. These are companies who are hiring in the Netherlands or in Amsterdam, and they're only competing with their local competitors. So these could be supermarkets, this could be the government, this could be small local startups. And these companies typically only pay a base salary. A lot of them don't even pay bonuses, and yeah, equity is out of the question. We'll see later the other tiers are paying a lot more, but typically there's the most number of opportunities for these very local companies. And now let's dive into the numbers. So I'm gonna start with the data points that have no company shared, and let's go at the entry level position. The way I categorize entry level was either by the title, which I know are entry level, or typically people who have roughly maximum one or two years of experience. So I have data points that don't have a company name shared, and we can see there's 33, 37, 40, 40, 42, 46, 49, 50, 59, 67. Where things get interesting is where we do have some company information. So I have companies with multiple data points for entry level, and this is for a Series B startup 46, a Mendix uh, at 44, Cool Blue at 33. And these were multiple data points in terms of we'll see these companies again. Now I have some one-off data points as well, which we should treat with caution and these are 30, uh, 50, 56. Now, I'm just gonna go through all of the data points for entry level positions, and now we're gonna get to see the tiers as well. So this data set doesn't have as many entry level data points, but we're gonna see some trends here. So 30, 33, 37, 40, 40 and a half, 42, 42 at a Dutch startup, 44 at Mendix, 46,000 at a Series B startup, and now we're starting to see something interesting. This package has a salary, it has a bonus, and it has some options that doesn't have a value on it because it might be hard to, to quantify. Now this is what I call a tier two type of compensation package. And this is what I mean by tier two. These are companies who are competing against everyone in the market. They wanna pay the best in the market, the best in Amsterdam or across all of the Netherlands. They're definitely aiming for above the tier one compensation packages. And so this person getting a base salary and a bonus and equity is starting to become tier two territory. You can see a Dutch start of 46, another one 47, 50, a scale up of paying 50, 55 at takeaway.com, um, 56 and a half at, at Adyen, and now we're seeing some equity being allocated there. We're already seeing at, at eBay, a uh, software engineer and leave entry level position where they might also hire with a few years of experience, a 60,000 annual salary, 6,000 bonus, 4,000 equity. This is definitely starting to become closer to the top of tier two for entry level positions. eBay's 78 total compensation. 
Amazon 82,000 for an L4 software engineer, which is the entry level, the lowest level that you can come into at Amazon. And this is a 66,000 salary, 9,000 bonus, and 7,500 equity vesting. Now, Amazon is starting to become what I call a tier three category. What does tier three mean? These are companies who are competing against all regional and global companies in the region. Basically, competing against everyone in Europe. These are these companies are no longer looking at just data points for the Netherlands or Amsterdam. They're looking at London and Zurich data points. So Amazon will be looking to compete with Facebook in London, Uber in Amsterdam, even Google in Zurich. And I know this because I worked at Uber in Amsterdam. I was a hiring manager and that's the companies that we competed against and the data points that we looked at. So going back here, entry level engineer at Amazon for 82,000 total compensation. 85 at Optiver, 86,000. And we're seeing something interesting with Optiver where the salary is 51, the bonus is 35. And we're gonna get back to the high frequency trading companies work. But this is, I mean, it is an entry level position, but it'll be really difficult to get in there. I'll tell you that one. Uber, 86,000. And I mean, I was a hiring manager at Uber. This is pretty accurate. It's probably higher these days, by the way. This is a 68,000 base salary, 7,500 bonus, and 11,000 in equity that is liquid, so you can sell it once it vests. 90,000 at Uber, 98,000 at Uber, and this is definitely a tier three category. This was an L3 level at Uber, software engineer one. These were often people who came in with little to no experience, and you can see just the spread between these. So we went from entry level engineers in Amsterdam getting 30,000 all the way to 98,000, and this is what I mean by the tiering of them. You know, that, that 30,000 was somewhere here, and this 90,000 or so was almost three times as much. That, that was somewhere here. And we can just see the difference. The reason I, I wanna draw up a rough idea of the distribution is it is good to know that there are a lot more opportunities, a lot more positions that pay closer to the lower end. The top part, the ones I mentioned with Uber, Uber will have a lot fewer people uh, hired at this point. There's a lot fewer opportunities and it's a lot more competitive, but these places do exist. And the existence of these tiers is also why some of the salary research that you might read online just, it feels a little bit off. And I'll give you an example. Here's Talent.io salary report from 2021, where they say that in Amsterdam, the median salary is 57,500. Now this is for all levels that they surveyed. And they also give us a salary distribution. So they see that in the salary range, they see you know from, from, from 30s all the way to, to 90s, but they, they saw very few data points in this high end. Now we haven't even gone to the high data points that, that I have. We just went through the entry level ones, but you can see that the second part of the entry level salaries above 50s, they were above what the median is for Talent.io. And Talent.io is looking at the whole market, not just junior engineers. In fact, Talent.io breaks it down based on years of experience. They're saying that they're saying 38,000 for zero to one years of experience and 47,000 to two to three years of experience. And if we just go through the data points that I had for entry level, it, it goes from 30 all the way to, yeah, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, depending on the tier, really. Now that we have an understanding of the tiers and why they're important, let's get back into looking at the hundreds of data points that I actually promised. A quick break for all viewers in Europe. As you probably know, there's a war happening in Ukraine. Russia has launched an all out attack to invade this democratic country in Europe. And if you're based in Europe, you're gonna know that this war is the biggest war since World War II in Europe. Now, I linked my thoughts below on what I think about this situation and why I think it's really important for anyone based in Europe, what me and my family are doing to support and what you can also do. If you live in Europe, please check it out below. So now let's continue on from the entry level. Let's go to the mid level. The mid-level category is the one that I categorize as people with a couple of years of experience or they have the mid-level title at some of the companies that I'm familiar with. For example, at Uber, there's a software engineer two title, which is below the senior level. So let's roll through all the data points from low to high. And we see there's 32, 38, 42 at Cool Blue, 42 at Bunk, at a bootstrap company, 42, Telco, at Albert Hein, 44, at Bunk 44, Albert Hein 44, Essent, Adyen, Diligent, Siemens, somewhere in, in Eindhoven, Bull.com 57, 58K for a Series B startup, Enable on at 58, ING, 
Series B startup DTN, Dazen, Backbase at in the 60s, Dazen, Molly, Bull.com, MessageBird, TomTom, Mendix, Picnic, Mendix, Ordina, Ticket, Tickets. We can see that Tickets also allocate some equity to people. Adidas, Books, Adyen, Picnic, Hyper, KPN, ServiceNow, Zvere, Adyen. And now we're in the 70s range. Ikea, Adyen, Molly, Booking.com. And now with Booking.com, we're starting to reach what I will call the tier three category. So for the, for the middle of the range, I based on these data points, it seems tier one would categorize as the companies who are paying in total compensation somewhere at or above 60K. 60 to 80K feels like tier two, depending on the kind of the equity packages. And above 80 for a mid-level position, it seems it might be starting to slowly touch the tier three category. You can kind of argue if, if, if it's 80 or 85, because for example, with this booking.com package, there is a 10K bonus. 5,000 equity, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to draw the line where tier three really starts. Katawiki, booking.com, we're seeing booking.com at close to 100K. And now it's, it's crossing the 100K. So these are people who have a few years of experience. They're not senior level yet, but in Amsterdam or the Netherlands, they're making over 100K. And at booking.com, another example, 83K base salary, 15K bonus, 5,000 equity. Booking.com, Databricks. A company who is not yet IPO, but they're giving pretty generous equity packages. Booking.com, Adgen, Uber, 120K for non-senior position. Uber. And the highest one that we have in, is in this category for mid-level is Databricks at 158K. Uh, 82K base salary, 16,000 or almost, almost 17,000 in cash bonus and 60,000 in annual equity, which is not liquid, but if the company goes public, it might be worth more, or if the IPO doesn't work out well, it could be worth less. Now, when I was at Uber, the IPO that we got allocated before the company went public, it was worth slightly less. We were allocated at $48 a share and the company went public at $45 a share. So now let's look at the senior numbers. And these are for positions that do have the name senior in the title or that do have a lot of years of experience, typically five years plus, sometimes like eight years plus even. So it starts with 34K at AM Docs, which seems a bit of an outlier. Bootstrap Company 50K, Media Star 52, Startup 54, Drunk Work Deal 55, Government 55, KPN at 59, Cool Blue at 60K. Luxsoft at 60, Cognizant, Government at 61, Bunk at 64, PostNL, Swisscom, EPAM, Hatch, Dazen, Books. We're now starting to reach the 70s, Van Moof, Mendix, Backbase, Sign Request, Diligent, and Reach, Container Solutions, Books, Park Mobile, Framer, Backbase, and the senior range is the one with the most data points. So I'm just going to go through these ones so you can see, because we're going to have a lot of data points in the seventies and you can just read out the companies. Rabobank. Picnic. Startups. Adyen. MessageBird. I'm going to pause at MessageBird because this data point, for example, it shows that the base salary for the senior is 78,000 and they're getting some equity. Now this person didn't put a value on it. This could be anywhere between, let's say, you know, worth 5,000 euros a year or, or maybe 20,000 or, or it might be more depending on how the equity is valued. The real value can only be put on it once the company goes public. Until then, some people provide an estimation, some people did not. Rabobank, and we're now at the 80s. Nike, Dazen, PostNL, Katawiki, Find Hotel, Miro. Miro is an example who also give equity. Dazen, Molly, Adidas, Framer, Adyen. And you can see that one thing I did with the coloring is green means the equity is liquid, so you can sell it. And if I go back, Yellow, for example, at Framer means that it's not public. 
the company is not public, you cannot sell the equity. So you're, allo you're, you're getting it and one day it might be valuable. Trip Actions, eBay, SurveyMonkey. We're now reaching the 90s. ING, IKEA, Dan.com, Booking, Allianz, Find Hotel, eBay, Beat. And now if, if we just take a break and look at where we are in terms of the tiers, I would say that all the way up to like the 80s or so, this, this was definitely tier one. Above the 80s, depending if there's equity, we might be talking about like tier two or so. And we'll see that crossing the 120s actually is where tier three will start. And I'm pretty sure that in my, in my data, the data that has been submitted, these tier three and tier two data points might be overrepresented. I'm not seeing as many tier ones that I was expect. But again, this might have to do with the people who are following me on Twitter or watching this YouTube channel and submitting salaries, they might be in the higher tiers. So let's go back to the hundreds. Companies where total composition for senior engineers in the Netherlands is above 100K. eBay, Booking.com, Catawiki, Trip Actions, Flexport, Disney streaming services. And we can see that there's a nice equity package there, 15K a year, Microsoft, Payout, WeTransfer, Loom, Atlassian. There's some freelance ones and we're gonna get back to the freelancing part. GitLab. Flexport, Uber Elastic, IMC Financial. I'm also going to touch on the financial trading companies in a bit. GitHub, we're now at 165. Amazon, Booking.com, Uber at 170. Uber, Digital Ocean, IMC Financial, Flow Traders, Apple, Databricks, Jump Trading, Databricks, Stripe, Uber, and the highest data point, 330K Stripe. And it's worth looking at this compensation. This is this is for a senior engineer. Oh, sorry. No, no, this is actually for a staff software engineer. So I got that wrong. But it's 150K base salary, 20,000 in bonus, and 160,000 per year in equity. That is mind blowing. The This type of offer, you could only see in the US beforehand, typically in Silicon Valley a few years ago. The fact that this offer was given out and then given out in 2021, it means that the market, the top of the market is becoming really, really, really hot. And this offer, by the way, getting this offer is extremely, extremely competitive, not just in terms of competitive in, in how you interview, it's also the know-how. I'm expecting the person getting this offer needed to be an expert in payment systems and large scale systems and in whatever Stripe was looking for at that time. So yeah, that was a really wide range, starting from let's say the 50s all the way to a few data points being over 200K. That's the four times difference. And then we have the extreme outliers like the Stripe one. So now let's look at the senior plus position. Senior plus, I defined as above senior. Head of development at a Dutch company for 61K. I mean, you know, we need to treat this with context. One thing that these data points don't have is location. And 61K in Amsterdam for a head of development probably doesn't sound like a great deal. But if it's outside of Amsterdam in a, a local town, if this setup is a place which is stress-free, maybe this person only works four days a week, maybe the position is super chill, or, or they might have some equity that they, they didn't list here, this might make sense, right? One of the problems that happens with this video that I did, it will help a lot of people who will be able to negotiate a lot more. But for some of you, it, it will create this pressure and stress because before you started watching this video, you might've thought, I'm actually making really good money, especially compared to my peers and my friends. The, the industry is great, I love what I'm doing and I'm happy. And now you're watching this video and thinking like, oh man, do people really make a lot more than this? Should, should I be switching? And I cannot make that decision. I'm just exposing information that you can work with. But don't forget that maximizing your earning might not be the smartest goal to do. In some cases, it might be. You might be in a situation where this absolutely makes the most sense. But in other cases, when you have your basic needs covered based on your family situation, it might make a lot more sense to choose workplaces that pay good enough but it also gives you the things that you need. It might be flexibility, it might be working with nice people on things that you care about. So, you know, just wanted to get that out there. Money is a thing that is very easy to quantify, but everything else about jobs, it's not easy to quantify and those things matter just as much. So don't forget about this when you're tempted to just chase that high total compensation. So back to, back to our, our head of development. 
Tech lead at Cool Blue, 65K. Software Architect, another tech lead at Cool Blue. Cool Blue, Bull.com, 75 at a Bootstrap Capital Company, Engineering Lead, Engineering Manager, 80K at Insided, at Shippel Group, 80K at Insided, Principal Engineering at Mobile Equity, Mendix, Find Hotel, KPN, Tickets, Nike, Series B Startup, Pegasystems, ING, US company, Catawiki for a senior software engineer, two at Catawiki, Dazen for an engineering manager, staff software engineer at a fast growth startup. And you can see that this staff software engineer is getting 84K base salary and then 12,000 in bonus and 16,000 in equity. Back base, eBay, booking.com. And your principal engineer at Series B startup, booking.com, engineering manager at GitLab, Lead developer, lead developer at 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 the band G at booking.com. Series B startup, engineering manager, staff software engineer at a pre-IPO company. 150K for a staff software developer at GitLab. And you can see that the salary is 110K. The equity at the time was not liquid. Now GitLab since then went IPO, so this could be worth this this is probably now worth more because GitLab's price shot up. So, you know, that 150K might be looking more like at 190K because they joined the company early enough and they got shares as well. Engineering manager, booking.com, lead developer, principal at booking.com, engineering manager, a Flexport engineering manager, booking.com, Uber at engineering manager too. This was actually my, my level uh, when I left Uber. And in a later video, I'll share my total composition, but my total composition at the time as engineering manager was above this, which comes to show you how different people at, at the same company can make different amounts. Uber, 243K. And the highest number we have here is 310K at a US public company that I'm not naming because there's only a few data points from here. But this is a company where this person joined before an IPO and they got 75K worth of options per year. But after the company went public, the stock went up so much that now that 75K per year equity is worth 185K per year. So this just rocketed their compensation until this equity vests for the next, probably like next year or so, after which their compensation will go back to, let's say, you know, 160 or 180K. But this comes to show you that if we look back to with the tiers of salaries, if you're in a tier two or three key company, you know, your salary may, might be somewhere here, let's say. But if an IPO happens and the stock goes up, it might just move up. Or if, if an IPO happens and the stock moves up a lot, it might just move there as well. Which is why having equity on top of a good base salary is such an underrated advantage. This could happen the other way around as well. The company might go public and it might not go that well. And then your composition goes down a bit. But again, typically the upside is, is a lot higher than the downside. And again, I'm not saying trade equity for salary. I'm saying it's a good strategy to choose places where you have a good base salary and equity on top of it. So now let's look at this, these data points from, from high to low, because I know that's what people are interested in. And again, we do see these th th above 300K composition packages in Amsterdam. That, that is insane, or two, above 200K as well. And there is a question of how do you get into these places? Is it, is it easy? Is it hard? And I'll tell you that it's really hard to get into these places, but I have some advice on what I tell people to prepare in terms of the coding and system design interviews for software engineering positions that are standard. To get into these places, the ones that pay above 150 or 200K per year, you need to nail both of these. And so check out some preparation resources. I'm linking this article in the link below. Also, if you wanna get into these places or if you're working at these places, my newsletter covers exactly these places, big tech and high growth startups. And I write about topics that can be useful both how to get into, but more importantly, how to thrive at these places. How do these companies work? In my latest newsletter issue, I actually covered Amazon's engineering culture and Amazon is a tier three company. They pay very well. We saw the compensation for entry level engineers starting at 80 something K for senior engineers above 150 or closer to 200K. 
In my article, I cover Amazon's engineering culture in probably the most depth that at least I've seen in any single article from their hiring processes. You know, what can you expect there to how does their compensation model work? What about internal mobility? What kind of perks do you get? To all the way to the career, what are their career ladders? How do performance reviews work? What about performance improvement plans that Amazon also comes with? It's, you know, it's they pay a lot, but they also expect a lot and you get some stress as well. What kind of engineering processes do they have? How do teams operate on call? Uh, and also what advice do other former Amazon engineers have to succeed at this place? So subscribe to my newsletter to get access to some of these really in-depth takes. And now we're gonna close up with talking about, about contracting versus trading companies versus big tech and high growth startups. Now, if you look at contracting and freelancing, the lowest numbers here are from 100K. When you contract or freelance in the Netherlands, you typically charge per hour or per day. It's more typical to do it per hour. Rates typically start at like 60 euros, but these days more, more around like 70 or 75. And to do contracting or freelancing, you typically need to be at a senior-ish level. But you can see that even if you charge like 60-ish uh, euros an hour, you're on the track to be able to make 100, 110 later, 100, 130, 137, 150, all the way to even 190 by charging 900 euros, having a client that pays this and doing this for the majority of the year. Now, the interesting thing is that until a few years ago, if you wanted to maximize your earnings, this was the way to go. You wouldn't work at the local companies who max out at maybe like 70 or 80K. You just did the same work and sometimes working with the same people, just going as contracting. Now with big tech arriving in the Netherlands and in Amsterdam, this is changing. Contracting is no longer necessarily the most profitable way to go. And there's two other paths. One of them is trading firms. Trading firms are an interesting one. So they pay a low base salary, but they have a very high bonus that is tied to the fund's performance. If basically, if your company makes a lot of money, you're gonna make a lot of money. And here's an example. This person at IMC Financial is making 85K in base salary and got a 70K bonus. Here's a person making 107K uh, base salary, 80K bonus. Another one, 75 base salary, 125K bonus. They got more cash bonus than their annual salary. And here's one, an Optiver, 75K base salary, 165K bonus. And this person says, Bonus can go, go up to 200K per year based on marbles and that's a share of profits. But this is insane. It's awesome to see that these numbers exist. It is a little bit of unpredictable and stressful though because if the company doesn't do well or if you don't stay the whole year, you're only left with 75K, not 240K. That's a big difference. Now, big tech, which is typically the tier three category companies, so this includes Booking.com and a bunch of US-based companies, and this group might be slowly growing as well. They also offer on the high end similar compensation. And let's look at from, from high to low the offers, and, and we see that the highest offers are, are not contracted, they're not trading firms, Stripe. This US-based public company, Databricks, Uber, Uber, and then we have the trading companies, Optiver, Jump Trading, Databricks, Stripe, so there's big tech, a late stage startup, so this will be some high growth startup as well, Databricks, Uber, Flow Traders, IMC Financial, Apple paying above 200K, Uber, Booking.com, Amazon, and now we get to the first freelance compensation, which is eight, 900 euros a, a day. So what, what I'm saying is, there's now multiple paths for those people who really want to maximize their, their annual income. Contracting is definitely a viable path. Going to big tech and getting to the senior or the staff positions is another one. And those positions can be trickier. And trading companies are also a place where you can make really good money. So we've gone to really, really high numbers. And some of you might be thinking, wow, these are absolutely bonkers numbers. And the crazy thing is that these numbers have actually only gone higher since. And I'm going to cover some 2022 numbers later on. But in the meantime, in my newsletter, I am covering how the market has gone up. And in September, I wrote about the perfect storm that, that is causing an insane tech hiring market, pushing the top of the market even higher and the different forces that are at play. If you're interested, check this article out in the video below. I hope this overview was useful to get a sense of just how wide the compensation range is, even in the Netherlands, how it differs based on the what I call the tier of the company, based on seniority. And more importantly, what are the names of the companies where you can get these packages? Now, I'm gonna cover more details in different European countries' compensation, but I need your help. 
please submit your composition information on this site called Tech Pays that I'm building. I'm linking the link below. You can enter your compensation, either your current or your past compensation, and you can anonymize the data. And this means that your company name will only be displayed if at least three people in the same country submit data from the same company and the position title is only displayed as well if people submit. So let's say you're a principal engineer at a small startup. You can submit this data, but the startup name will not be shown unless at least three other people have submitted it. And the title principal engineer will not be shown unless two other principal engineers in the same country, in the same company have also submitted it. So it grants some anonymity. We're working with a small team and we're getting ready to launch the first few countries, so stay tuned for that. And thanks for your help in advance. Like this video and subscribe to the channel to not miss the future updates. And if you're working in tech, subscribe to the Pragmatic Engineering Newsletter. Thanks and see you next time.